Hello, Polygoners! In particular, hello, Jay! I see you are trying to uh, do the Gem Rising Hydralisk build. Congratulations, man. You fucked it up. But it's okay. We still love you. <laughs> um, so, yeah. The first thing I want to focus on here is initially the first 90 seconds. Um, you do this little drone scout thing. We'll get to that. But I want to, like, point out something. Gem Rising is one of the cheesiest, most aggressive players in the world. If you try to play Zerg in a defensive capacity or in a greedy economic capacity like Sauron style Zerg, you're not playing Gem Rising style. Um, your initial Facebook post said your two one or your um, anti two one one hydralisks are not like Gem Rising's anti two one one hydralisks. I should also point out that you did not actually face two one one, therefore the hydralisks were a dumb idea. We're gonna build into that, but We've been looking at this first 90 seconds. We're about 67 seconds in. And my first question is, what the fuck is this little drone harass nonsense? Did you start playing Protoss or something? Like, this is not a Zerg thing to do. This is a Protoss thing. Um, harassing this does nothing. And in actuality, you actually waste your scout to try to do that, which completely eliminates the reason for the scout. By scouting, you have one thing and one thing only you want to achieve. Poke in here, poke in here. Is it one gas? Is it two gas? Is it no gas? This is very important information, my friend. Also, let's get some sound up in this piece. All right. So you're not actually going to be aware of this. You do manage to get this drone away, do a little more harassment, kind of, kind of, kind of being really super cheeky, down to one HP, in fact. And that's uh, that's kind of brutal. But that's okay. That is absolutely fine really you expect to lose this drone because what ends up happening is that second SCV should have just dropped a depot not even bothered finishing it you're locked in and all you can do is run around and buy time and like keep this drone alive this is your goal if you're going to drone scout just keep it in this base so that nothing is uh is invisible to you so if you're actually like harassing and like attacking an SCV and taking damage the amount of time you're going to be alive is actually limited um, because think about it, if this is a 2 one one you're not going to have that first Marine coming out. It's going to be a Reaper, but then the Reaper has to rush to your side of the map or kill the SCV. If you see the Reaper, you see that there's only one gas, you can assume uh, certain things. You can scout in at four minutes and confirm those things. But essentially, if you're going to drone scout, you're going to die in this top base, and that's fine. Harassment, there's just no point in it. Okay. Now... Let's uh let's come back here, and it's been a little bit since you took this base. Let's just rewind a little. Yeah, this seems about right. Okay, so this is right here around 42 seconds. You're just now producing these three drones. All right, cool. We're not going to get too into build order details, but this is important here. So, um, you're at 17. You should be taking your fast expansion at 17. So the moment you hit 200 minerals, you should be pulling one of these drones and sending it here. Hopefully you're using camera hotkeys with this being like control Q, this being like control W, then you can just alt Q, alt W and bounce back and forth. Camera hotkeys are super helpful in the early game. All right. So we'll just clip on through here real quick and we'll see when you actually send this out. So you should be predicting it and you're sending it out at 200. Great. This is the perfect timing. And you're going along, you're going along, you're going along, you're going along. Now, why is that a little bit late? Because you sent the drone scout. The drone scout's going to hurt your overall mining capacity. So knowing that you sent the drone scout, send it a little after 200. But even then, this is not a huge deal. Not at all. Okay, so this is super nitpicky, but this next part is not. Let's see when you actually build it. You've got the time. Boom. You lost a few seconds there. And that's fine because it's small. But now let's look at the next part. How often are you going to do this? How often are you losing these seconds? And what does it culminate into? So at this point, we're about to be hitting. Here's the larva. You can build a drone. You're about to be hitting 18. Okay? As soon as you build this, you have 30 left over, you can go take this gas. Although this would probably be a better gas because it's got a shorter distance, you're going to take this one. Whatever, um, I'd consider this one though. Um, okay, you're delaying it, you're delaying it, you're delaying it, you build the extra drone, but it's a few seconds late obviously. And still delaying, still delaying, still delaying, still delaying. What's going on? Why aren't you taking this gas? This is a very important thing because not only is it important 
like in a general build structure when you go fast expand you need metabolic boost as soon as possible which means you need gas as soon as possible because you need the metabolic boost to be able to start as soon as the spawning pool finishes well you're hurting yourself right now and see you're almost at 200 you can almost build the spawning pool before you build the gas this is not how this is supposed to look and boom, there's the 200. So you just now realize you didn't take a gas. Boom, now your gas is taken. Now you're 40 some uh, minerals over, uh, 55 minerals over by the time that finally gets built. Do you understand how massively you're screwing yourself here, bro? You took your gas here at one minute and 11 seconds, or you should be. Like that is when you could have built it, but you took it at 120. And then it took you another two seconds to get the spawning pool up because you had to go build this first and like you just confused yourself. Like that was obvious just by looking at what units you were clicking. It, it was completely obvious. And here's the thing. You're not going for Sauron styles or this game. You're going for the tech-based Hydralisk uh, mid-game, which is, you know, tech-based. So by delaying this gas, you're hurting yourself even more than you would on a Sauron style Zerg. So gas is very important with a tech-based style, and so is your economy since you have so much less of it. Little mistakes like this are going to start mattering long term. Anticipate these things like 10 seconds earlier, you'll be solid. Your gas is going to finish at a minute 40, but here's the downside to that you're actually not going to saturate it for another 14 seconds. You're not going to saturate it until a minute 54. Let's actually look at this. See, not saturating. You're at 17 out of 16, but you're not saturating. 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 Still not saturating. Still not saturating. See how annoying this is getting? Like I'm sitting here staring at this. Now, bear in mind, well, there's the two out of three. Cool. But those are these two. I'm completely aware of what is happening out on the map, and I think it's absolutely retarded. Like, I have never shown you that this is a good idea. Because, like, this SCV is just completely chasing your drone. He should have gone back home. This is an idiot for doing this. But also, you're, like, this, this whole thing just doesn't make any sense. Watch this, watch this. Okay, so, traveling along, traveling along. We've already talked about how, like, having one drone off minerals makes a huge difference. Now you've actually had to pull a second drone to come save this drone from something that shouldn't even be a threat. And this is hurting you even more. So remember when I said, because you're doing a tech-based style, your economy is going to be super more important than it was, like, if you're going a Sauron style Zerg, because Sauron style Zerg is more forgiving. This right here, ah! Like, what, 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 why? So, you lost 14 seconds on this. Nine seconds to build it longer than it should have. So you've lost 23 seconds on this gas. All right, this is huge, and it's about to make a big difference in your build. Watch, okay? As your spawning pool, which should be finishing right around now, should be finishing about 201, by the way, don't let that happen. That extra, no, no, no. Travel here, travel here. Micro, like rather than just sending them straight in and going in like that, no, yeah, and like use your shift cube. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't let that happen. Because you also shouldn't have an opening right here where Hellions can get in. All right, so. Metabolic boost should finish, or should start rather, the moment spawning pool finishes. Let's see, it's 208, 209, about the time your spawning pool is finishing. Metabolic boost is the most important upgrade of the early game because it allows you to knock back Reapers. Now this guy, he's doing a 111 build, he's doing a fast expansion, um, but he's doing the 111, then the fast expansion, it's all good. Um, but this delays his Reapers, so you're getting so lucky, but oh my god, this would get you killed in any other circumstances. So let's see how long it actually takes you to start metabolic boost. You're at 24 gas right now. So you have to mine 76 gas. That's why you would get this gas sooner and all of the other things we've talked about. You're not going to get this until two minutes and 52 seconds. You're going to be almost a full minute behind on metabolic boost, which means these four lings you're making are going to be completely destroyed by any good player with a reaper. Like, all the Reaper has to do is get on the edge of Crete and poke in and out. Use the C8 charges. And, like, you're even going to see a little bit of that here. So, you just lost your first drone. Lost a second drone. And notice he's not kiting. He should be kiting. Like, stop, attack, 
run away because he has faster movement speed than you and he can get away with it but he's not that good of a player and you're able to to pull this off this should get you killed now we finally have metabolic boost starting and now we have another mistake well watch what you do when you start metabolic boost you're about to pull off these guys now if you were doing sauron style zerg this is good but here's the thing you actually pull these guys off while doing a tech based style you also pull them off after mining another 96 or so gas so i assume this right here is for pneumatized carapace which you should be sending in an overlord around four minutes so that times out fairly well so let's say that you know you're doing sauron style zerg and you want to do that cool now you're sending this guy over here, taking your third base. All right, cool. This looks like a slightly delayed third base on a Sauron style Zerg, um, which isn't that great, but you know, whatever. Your your level, you can get away with it. Again, the Reaper is going to uh, you know just manage to get away, and he was not in position to deny this third. Had he been, you would not be taking this third, or you would be losing a lot of links. Now you've got the pneumatized Carapace coming along. But that's good for Sauron style Zerg. You just spent gas you needed for Hydralisks. Anyways, uh, this game is going to be um, a little bit of a technology based game for Jim Rising, who typically is a player who likes to play with a heavy um, get, uh, like uh, economy. So see him go for the faster gas and staying on the uh, gas here after a spawning pool is very very interesting i'm not sure if this is a uh, typical of the current meta or if it's just a stylistic thing we do have pneumatized carapace actually coming out for gym rising which isn't very typical of someone who's going for a faster mulesk build and now you're no longer mining gas which means your layer is going to be super delayed so let's also look at this guy's um infrastructure this is the four minute mark you should definitely be sacrificing an overlord which should be like right here into this area you do not actually have an overlord there, which is a major bad thing furthermore this isn't even 2-1-1 this is 1-1-1 and we're going to talk about some strengths and weaknesses of both of them in a moment but big thing you should be knowing what you're up against this is a double gas build this is not 2-1-1 which is mineral based okay he's got hellions guess what hellions do extra damage to light armored they do almost double to that they themselves are light armored so are lings so are hydras ling hydra is not good against someone who's going 1-1-1 simply because of the hellions hydralisks on the other hand are used to shut down 2-1-1 around four minutes like i said you should be scouting in so you know is this 2-1-1 if it's not, you're definitely not going to be going for Hydralisks. This is a fast expand with 111, which typically employs Fast Banshee or Raven. It's typically Reaper, Hellion, Banshee. This is an older build, and basically it uses technology to keep the Zerg from making too many drones too quickly. However, Zerg learned how to repel it very easily and could still make, you know, less drones than they could, like unharassed, but still a good amount and shut down the um, Terran in the late game however it does force the game to go into a mid slash late game um reaper hellion great defensively if you're seeing like a ling baneling all in or roachling or even roach baneling banshee does even more at the defensive structure so you can play it defensively off 111 you can play it offensively off 111 the thing is you never actually adapted to the fact it was 111 what are the strengths of 111 compared to 211? 111's going to give you a better economy because you're able to get the faster expansion um, just by virtue of being safer with the Hellions, with the Banshees, like we were talking about. Uh, you have more harassment and damage potential. You also have a tech based strategy. This you know is comparable to what you're doing as the Gem Rising Hydra Listling player, is also a tech based strategy. So what are the strengths of 2 and one if those are the strengths of 1-1-1? 2 one gets you a much faster stem pack, which, you know, is actually the most important upgrade for Terran. So by delaying that in 1-1-1, you're actually delaying your mid-game. You're getting all these units that actually aren't that useful in the mid-game, but they're great in the early game. So you're really delaying what you want to get 
for something that's kind of annoying and pesky. So that's why this kind of went out of the wayside. You also get faster marine production because you're getting the reactors, you've got the stem pack, you're getting barracks faster. Compare like the when um, 111 gets a five barracks production to when like 211 gets five barracks production. It's insane. You have the easy ability to destroy mutalisks off 211 because you are getting the faster marines. You do already have stem pack. You're already getting the medevacs. Like everything you would be needing it just completely destroys mutalisks, and that's what Zerg like to get. So this 111 is super vulnerable to mutalisks, because what? Reapers don't shoot up. Banshees don't shoot up. Hellions don't shoot up. You kind of see where, like, they have different weaknesses, and therefore you should play against them differently? So what are the diff uh, weaknesses of 111? You're also delaying your upgrades in addition to stem packs. So like your 11 infantry upgrades delayed, which again delays from your mid game. Um, you've got the delayed marine production because you're getting the five barracks a little bit slower. You have a huge anti-air vulnerability. And that's really actually very important. So around here at four minutes, you have to know what your opponent's doing. And like if you poke in here and you see reactor on the Hellions, but you don't see a reactor on your barracks, and you don't see like the tech lab that is on the barracks isn't actually researching STEM, there you go. Now you know. Um, if you see a starport with a tech lab on it instead of a reactor, now you know. All of, like, any any one of these, like this combination, this combination, or this combination, any one of these three with an Overlord Scout would tell you everything you need to know. And you've got all three lined up right here. Boom, boom, in, out, boom, easy peasy jeezy. I don't know why you didn't do that. We're finally starting to remine gas. Cool. All right, so notice the Hellions now inside of your base. They're going to be able to bypass these queens, get up this ramp, whatever they want to do. You have no defenses here. You don't have evolution chambers to help block this in. You don't have a spine crawler in here. Like traditionally, you have an Evo here, an Evo here, and a spine crawler here. That way, if they try to dart in here, you've got a queen there. And if they try to dart in here, you've got a queen there. Um, you can kind of zone them in and make it like so that they have to run in one at a time. It's much less effective. But watch how they're just going to swarm in all four of them at once and then boom, roast a huge amount of drones. Now he's not even microing. He's spending some time killing your queens, spending some time killing your lings. He gets surrounded. This guy is no good. And you've got the lings there to shut it down. Um, he chooses to engage you on creep. We know creep gives you a huge advantage, particularly as a ling player. That 1.9 speed advantage, huge, huge, absolutely huge. That's why we got this little wheel, you know, tire floating right here. Because uh, <laughs> speed advantage is actually pretty good. But this is hurting you so, so much. Look, you're already floating 555 minerals, dude. You don't have a second gas, which you should be having between 36 and 42 um, supply. You don't have that. Um, and that's typical of Sauron style Zerg. That's not even a tech based style Zerg. So, like, you're doing tech based, so you should have never pulled off and you should be getting the second gas. You pulled off and you forgot your second gas. That is hugely critical. You've not even been able to saturate this. Why? Because you just lost eight drones. You also lost the mining time of having to send them over here. Luckily, you had a base to send them to, but now they're more vulnerable because you have less creep spread. You're not actually connecting these two with your creep spread. So, all he's got to do, come in right in here, which he's going to do later on with a massive amount of marines because you've not been able to shut down his production and basically the game is over why is the game over because you should have been getting your lair a minute ago you should when you're scouting with that overlord you're also getting your lair if your overlord scouts 111 cool let's go for a mutalisk ling baneling build if you scout the 2-1-1, let's go for the Hydralisk Ling build. You adapt to your opponent. Here, you didn't adapt, my friend. Also, if you're doing Hydraling, or Hydraling, don't get the Baneling Nest. Again, you're just spending gas you don't have. You've got a huge amount of drones incoming, but you still cannot actually manage to spend the mineral income that you have. So what's the point of mining these? Like, there's no point in making drones if your macro is not good enough to use the income, otherwise you're literally just, you know, spinning tires. Now you're finally getting the uh, two more gas, so you're on a second and third gas, that's cool, but is this really what Gemrising was doing? 
I actually want to spend a little bit of time looking at what Jim Rising did here in a few moments. But we're going to watch this. You shut down the Banshee. You're going to sh shut down another Banshee down here somewhere. Um, but now we've got the plus one infantry. And his army supply is actually getting super scary. And you've been having a hard time keeping up with his worker supply too. You're floating all of this. Your gas is super late. You forgot to um, saturate either of these two. Um, you're getting all these spore crawlers, which you don't actually need because you're supposed to have a lair, which means you're going to have some overseers. Like, you're using Sauron tactics in the form of, like, you know, spore crawlers with a tech based style. Like, you cannot mix and match. It is one or it is the other. It's the same way that you see bio style Terran or you see mech style. You don't usually see that much of an influx of both. And again, He's just shutting you down. He's 20 army supply ahead of you. You guys are even on workers and you're floating 2,000 minerals, man. Now you're down to 1,200. Cool. But Lings aren't going to do it. Hellions aren't going to do it. Like, the Hellions shut down the Lings. The Hellions, or now Hellbats, rather, uh, shut down the Hydralists. You saw, how, like, this guy's not even that good. He's not doing a great job retreating to his reinforcements. He just let everything die. And he's still going to get this third base. He's still going to destroy you. Why? Why? Why does this happen? Because you didn't take your gas, my friend. We have the evolution chamber. And uh, this is going to be a third base. We're here around four minutes. Pneumatized carapace coming into effect. He is going to scout that this is definitely a 2 one, one setup here. And Jim Rising, definitely the type of player that can react with the perfect response given the correct information he has that information now so let's see exactly how he chooses to react going to be flooding out some lings this is of course necessary because he is at max saturation for his chosen gas count and we've got the layer coming a little bit later than we maybe would have expected but the pneumatized ter carapace definitely worth that first hundred gas after metabolic boost we've got the second extractor here um and that's going to be the third one total second one on this base that is but not quite immediately saturating that does have that third base saturation and as you can see the worker count around completely even for both these players third base in production for cuddle bear so both the players going for a three base kind of macro style but the drops are going to be starting here with this typical 2 one, one timing at the third taking out the first queen but does lose four marines in that attack and we see the hydralisk den has started here at the natural an interesting place to put all of your tech considering how easily it is to get a drop ship in here but with this being the fourth base taken by jim rising he should be able to shut that down at this passage here and we do see some amazing creeps spread by jim so this is going to be a really easy uh four base cluster to defend guys i am shaf with polygon gaming thank you so much for watching this if you enjoy this content please punch that like button in the face smash that subscribe button and give us a visit on patreon every dollar counts i appreciate you hopefully you appreciate this content share it with your friends and until next time guys shout out my dudes if you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.